Have you ever found it weird how Hanzo's storm arrow does not cause a storm to happen? Me neither, until today. So originally this video was going to be called purposely misinterpreting Overwatch abilities, but then I eventually had a list of very similar abilities and that kind of felt boring. And on top of that, I was having trouble coding dummy bots to actually shoot rockets and all that, as you can see with the rockets and the cannons. So instead, I just changed it to dumb ideas in general. And I also did a poll on what people would want to see. And luckily, the dumb ideas won, so that's cool. Either way, let's get on to the dumb changes. Feel free to like if you liked it. Subscribe if you subscribed it. I said that wrong, but I don't care. And join the Discord if you want to be my Discord kid. And please don't. That's a, that's a terrible idea to join a server. If anyone tells you that you're going to be their Discord kid, get away from them. As the first one up, you may be a little bit confused at Ana's. You may notice that my uh, point of view is a little bit different. Well, if I go outside, you'll see that I can see my gun. I can also see my legs. So, of course, I'm still Ana. But you may notice that that's my left leg, and I can go quite far to the left. But if I try to go to the right, um, I'll do a step. That's because my camera is set to only being able to see out of her left eye. And you may notice that the gun is a little bit more to the right than it should be. And like I said, it's because I'm looking at only her left eye. If you don't know, Anna's eye got hit by a Widowmaker, obviously losing it. And even though she could have replaced it, she decided to put an eye patch over it. Because that shows where she is in her life now. That's from the wiki. So in game, I made it quite simple. Anna only has one eye, and so her camera is a little bit different. It is quite fun playing like this though. Next up is Ash, and you know how Ash's gun is called the Viper? Well, uh... Her gun turns into a snake. So, uh, when you shoot the Viper... You turn into a snake. That's about it. Vipers are a type of snake, so I just... <laughs> I just frankly wanted to make her a snake. It looks quite dumb. I still have the same hitbox. I still have the same abilities. I am invisible, so the bots don't see me, but... If I was to get a real player in here, they would <laughs> obviously be able to know that I'm Ash. And I do have the same hitbox as Ash, but... I'm a snake. Also, being a snake is chronic, so once you're a snake, you're always a snake. Now, before we talk too much about Baptiste, I gotta mention that I had this list of weird changes, and a lot of them overlapped, because the original video idea was to make a pun out of every ability, and purposely misinterpret it to mean something else. So, for example, Ash had the Viper, so I turned her into a snake. Well, for Baptiste, I had Biotic Launcher that shoots animals, and then I had someone else who did that, and then I decided that launching animals just wasn't it. So I looked at the EXO boots, and you see how it's EXO, like EXO, 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 like you love someone and you're gonna propose to them. So I'm gonna propose to my Discord kittens by crouching, and after 5 seconds and a couple of beatings, I will propose to everyone in range. Now you can't see it because we are not the Discord kittens, but if they don't accept in 10 seconds, I die. My Discord kittens do not love me. This is what it looks like from their end. Also, if you accept, you'll make a baby. When I was reading Bastion's abilities, I realized that Configuration Assault says that it is a slow-moving tank with a powerful Rotary Cannon. Now, of course, I know what a Rotary Cannon is. However, I was really stuck on a slow-moving tank part because even though I know that tanks have machine guns a lot of the time, the only tank I could think of were the ones from Tiberium Sun, where they can only shoot large rockets. Even though Bastion still has his machine gun, obviously, now he's a tank too, so he can just infinitely shoot rockets at people. Next up is Brig, and Brig unfortunately suffers from me not having a good idea for any of her abilities. I was gonna do rockets come out of a rocket flail, but like I said, I was having trouble with the dummies for some reason. So instead, I rotated her shield. So instead of going up and down, it goes left and right. Uh, obviously, I just made the shield smaller, but it kind of looks like I just rotated it 90 degrees, and then when it goes back, it kind of goes back to 90 degrees. Honestly, in her ultimate, it kind of looks smaller, but it was a funny idea just to rotate it for no reason. If you read about Cass and his ultimate Deadeye, it says face off against your enemies. Now, of course, I might read that wrong, but I'm going to think of it as a 1v1. You know how in Team Fortress 2, how you can duel someone randomly, and it declares a duel to them. Well now, if you high noon, whoever you look at, 
You'll start a duel with them. Everyone will be frozen for 10 seconds, and uh, you get to duel them. Something I should mention, by the way, is that I'm gonna die, and it can save you. But also, if you try and kill someone else that's not your target, nothing will happen. That is the same with the person you are dueling, by the way. They cannot kill your teammates either. Next up is D.Va, and just like I said with Brig and Bap, I had a different idea for her. So as you can see, she has guns called Fusion Cannons, and I was gonna make it so she sent out cannonballs, but I just didn't code it well. So it didn't work. I do have some custom projectiles, but it doesn't work as well. So instead, what I did is, if you press F, you say a racial slur. Um, yeah, that's it. All it does is it plays that message to everyone, and it disables your boosters uh, for five seconds. I mean, this video is called Dumb Workshop Changes. What did, what did you expect? Next up is Doomfist, and have you ever found it weird how, in lore, Doomfist can knock down a skyscraper? I find it weird, too. So yeah, he's much stronger now. I cannot use hand cannon, though, because, you know, I tried to somewhat balance it. Not really. This is not balanced at all. Uh, but his gauntlet actually kills stuff now. They're retting each other. Hang on, let me, let me deal with my Discord kitten population. Have you ever found it weird that Echo's duplication isn't like an exact replica? Like, it's a little weird that she becomes a blue version of the character. So I just made it so when you duplicate, you just straight up become that character. That's it. <laughs> that's, the, that's the dumb change I made to Echo. You just straight up become that character. Originally when I was doing Genji, I was going to make it so Swift Strike was just a really fast melee. But unfortunately you cannot change the melee speed on how fast it goes. Or just how fast a character can go in general. You can only slow it down with the slow-mo. So I had to come up with a different idea, and that idea was... Did you ever realize that when Genji reloads, he only reloads 9 shurikens into his arm? So I, uh... I quite simply made it so he only has 9 shurikens, and then when he reloads, he only reloads 9 shurikens. The changes up until now have been like, buffs or minor nerfs or just kind of reworks to the characters. I uh, Genji just got a straight up <laughs> um, ammo nerf, and I know people are gonna hate that, but I promise. Oh, hey, look, the snake. I promise. I really did try to do something else, but I couldn't get it to work. I have, of course, realized that Genji either gets massively nerfed or massively buffed in my workshop game modes, so uh, I'm very sorry to you Genji players. Next up is Hanzo, and have you ever noticed that his bow is called the Storm Bow? You know, like a storm? So if I was to hit a shot on someone, you'll realize that a thunder strike strikes them. This doesn't do increased damage or anything, but it more importantly, it just looks cool. That's about it. So if I was the ultimate right now, you'll notice a bunch of thunderstorms coming down and killing people. And it just looks cool. Hi, Bob. How are you? By the way, this does work with the other abilities. So sonar does work and storm arrow also works. Alright, so with Junker Queen, she's the leader of Junker Town, so I thought it was a little weird how her commanding shout doesn't really command anyone. So if I was to shout, it commands her crosshair to go to the nearest person, so that's just a cool thing. But it's mostly so you can ping the person, so your teammates can see them. So now commanding shout will force your teammates to look at the person that you are also looking at. There's only one problem. Uh, Junker Queen isn't very good at her job, so when you shout and you're supposed to turn to where she's looking, you just look <laughs> in a different direction. I don't know why that happens, but apparently she's not a not a very good leader. Next up is Junkrat, and you know how Junkrat has concussion mines? Well, now when you throw the concussion mine, you'll look straight down so I can track where it goes, and then you'll give everyone in a radius a concussion, including yourself. Just that simple, this is what it looks like from the side. Next up is Kiriko, and you know how Kiriko has an ability called Swift Step where she can teleport directly to an ally? Well, the thing is that I find it a little weird that Swift Step isn't just like a step. So now if you use it, you do one really big step. If you want to see what it looks like from the side, here you go. Next up is Wife Weaver, I mean, next up is Wife Beater, I, sorry, hang on. Next up is Life Weaver, and you know how he has an ability called Life Grip? Well, you see this Arissa, I want her life. 
Now some may say this will make life grip completely useless, but I'll show you why it's not. Since I know all of you guys have taken somebody's life force before, you should know that when you life grip someone, you heal. So as you can see, I instantly healed, and I don't know how I pulled that person when I sucked off, I mean, uh, when I life gripped that person. Anyways, apparently the targeting system's not perfect, but that's okay. There we go. Like I said, this game mode isn't exactly made for being played, it's just to show off these dumb changes. Next up is Lucio with a pretty funny change. We all know that Lucio has that one Overwatch League emote that people have, so I turned Lucio just straight up into a piano. So of course when I press an ability, it'll do a random noise. Now it's a little hard to hear because I'm shooting off my ability, so if you press F, you'll freeze so you cannot make any other noise. So when I was to shoot my gun, it makes that noise. Secondary fire. The E. Ability 1. I'm gonna be real with you, I don't remember the last button. It's not crouch, crouch is how you unpiano yourself. Okay, melee is the last one, which is that. Just as a reminder, everyone on the map can hear your noises, so be very respectful with them. Next up is May, and I've decided to make Blizzard just as reliable as the actual company. Next up is Mercy, and since it was in the thumbnail, I may as well just mention it. You guys know how it's called a Valkyrie, and a lot of Valkyries have swords. Well, I decided to try and give Mercy a sword, and it doesn't look perfect, but it's okay because it's pretty cool. So as you can see, you'll see there's a Genji on me, swinging! Now it's a little hard to get him to actually hit stuff, uh, here we'll go. There we go. Uh, this is just Dragon Blade, but better. However, you guys know how I said earlier that I was having trouble with the dummy bots? Well, this is what I mean, he doesn't go away. And if anyone who knows how to use the workshop want to look at the code and fix it, feel free to. But I went to the like workshop discord and the first thing I saw was somebody doing the, th the same thing I did. So I'm not sure how to fix it and frankly I think this is more funny. So we're just gonna <laughs> get away from Mercy 5. Apparently Coalescence, which is more as ultimate means that you're mixing stuff together, so her ultimate is mixing the yellow healing juice with the purple suck juice. However, I might have misinterpreted that, and um, now she coalesces with the enemy team, and this is what it looks like. As you can see, it's very balanced. Apparently my- as I was saying, apparently my team also gets sucked to me. I did not mean to do that. But, uh, just everyone in the match gets coalesced together. Um, I really want to get back to the fight. So as you can see, I popped my ultimate. My whole team died. Next up is Orisa, and I saw the ability Fortify. And as a Fortnite player, I decided to make the Fortiport, or... No, I said it wrong, god dang it. So I decided to make the Portafort from Fortnite. Now, if I was to go over here, obviously I'm gonna take damage. Although you can't see it because my Brig is rallying. If I was to hypothetically remove my supports, um, I will still take healing for some reason. But now, if I build a port fort I'm protected. And so are they, but that's the trade-off for a port fort Oh god. Oh my god, why is this guy chasing me? Get out of here, you weirdo. Anyways, Orisa has a port fort It doesn't look very good, but that's literally the best you can do with the workshop. I'm now hungry. Anyways, we will move on to the hungry character next. Um, as you can see, you see the other team, right? I have my ultimate, so I'm gonna barrage them. And as you can see, Justice is heading towards them. Now my barrage normally kill them, but as you can see that Ramatra in that split second did take damage, so I'll do it again, but this time I'll look away. And I missed. Oh, no I didn't. Uh, you know how I said I wanted to do cannonballs, but I kind of glitched it out? That's what I meant. So obviously, I just made it so Fara range justice from above, and it's kind of hard to see from this side, so here's it from a side angle. I think it looks pretty funny. As promised, we're going to talk about the hungry character now. If we look at Ramacha's abilities, you may notice that he has something called Ravenous Vortex. So I took that as he is ravenously hungry when he uses it. Now as you can see, my tummy hurts, and I'm hungry, I'm taking damage, and I'm feeling pretty hungry for a health pack. So when you eat a health pack, he becomes unhungry. That's about it, he's just a hungry guy. 
Next up is Reaper, and this one is less of a pun and more just kind of cool. So you know how it's called Wraith Form and Shadow Step. So a Wraith is kind of like a ghost, so I may as well give him properties of a ghost. And he can go through walls. Now the reason we've been on Rialto this entire time is because if you don't know, there's a secret area on Rialto. I'm guessing they tried to rework the map or something. And there's like half of the map over here for some reason. I think it looks pretty cool. I wish you could access this in like a deathmatch. I don't really know what it'd be used for. Honestly, I might try and make a battle royale out of Rialto because it's such a big map. Also, I've tried to make Star Wars Battlefront on Rialto because it looks like Naboo. Sort of. So maybe I'll work on that project again and have this area be a map or something. Anyways, feel free to just wraith form through stuff and try not to fall out of the map. Next up is Reinhardt, and initially I was going to have it so it was rocket hammer shot rockets, which would have been cool, but like I said with Farah, I kind of messed up, and same with Mercy, where the dummies just wouldn't go away. So instead, I decided to make fire strike, make it so your next hit lights them on fire. And because of how I coded it, you can infinitely just keep lighting your sword on fire. I mean, a uh, hammer, sorry. So it's just kind of cool. I just thought since it's called fire strike, it's a strike that lights people on fire. This does work with any ability, by the way, so if I shatter, uh, she died, but she's on fire. Next up is Roadhog, and I'm pretty sure I already leaked this one earlier, but when you try and take a breather, he just takes a nice, deep breath. A little hard to hear, but he just simply takes a breath. He gets tired of shooting people all day, murder, arson, stealing, so he just has to take a small breath. Kind of like the Kiriko one, where it's just kind of like... I simply just nerfed the ability to make it funny. Speaking of nerfing someone just to make it funny, so he obviously has his ultimate Gravitic Flux, and so Gravitic means that he's floating. He's already floating, so I don't have to code that. But a Flux is the action or process of flowing or flowing out. There's also the second definition in medicine, which is an abnormal discharge of blood or other matter from within the body. So I just took that as all of his blood goes out of his body when he ultimates. Next up is Sojourn, and you know how she has her disruptor shot, you know, to disrupt the enemy. Well, now it disrupts the game, so as you can see, I'm dying really quickly. And when I do it, it disrupts the game for a moment and slows everyone down. Although this is an odd way to interpret disruptor shot, it does make for some cool cinematics. So it is actually quite fun to mess around with. But being on the receiving end is definitely disruptive. When I looked at Soldier's abilities, I realized that Soldier had the Heavy Pulse Rifle. So, I realized, hey, why is he sprinting with such a heavy weapon? Wouldn't he drop it? So now Soldier has to be more careful when he's running, because it's heavy. Yeah, that's about it. His gun is now heavy, so he's a little slower because it's heavy, and he has to make sure not to drop it. He may be a super soldier, but it's still heavy. His gun's just, just a little heavy. Next up is Sombra. And you know how she has a translocator? I think we all know where this is going. I put a space between trance and locator, and now her translocator locates trans people. Moving on to Symmetra. Symmetra can only be played on symmetrical maps. <laughs> Some of you may be confused because the push maps and the control maps, you may think that they're symmetrical. But, um, I'm pretty sure most of them aren't. So take note of right here, you see the Gelati BB... I don't know how to say words. You see this taco truck or whatever, I don't know, that probably says like hot dog or something, I have no idea what that says. But take a good look at it, take a good look at it. And if we were to go to the other side, you may notice something slightly different. So the front of the car is right there, right? While the front of the car is on the left side over here. Not only that, but you see that red car right there? If we were to go back, it is actually blue. So yeah. Now, you see how it says machines have no rights, Omnix stay underground? Let's see if that's different. Also, there's different shops on each side, just saying. And no graffiti on this side, so they're not perfectly symmetrical. So Symmetra's OCD gets to her, and she doesn't come to these maps. By the way, I've not found the difference on every map, so there's a small chance that there is a symmetrical map, but I doubt it. Alright, moving on to Torbjorn. You know how Torbjorn has the ability Overload? 
Well, Overload now overloads his heart and he dies. Next up is Tracer, and Tracer has her blinks. They're pretty cool. However, what happens if you stop blinking? I want you right now to stop blinking. When you don't blink as Tracer, your eyes start to hurt and they water a little bit. So to fix that, you gotta blink. Next up is Widowmaker with probably a boring one, but I still wanted to do it because I thought it was funny. Widowmaker does more damage to people who are married. Widowmaker is not married because she killed her husband. I mean, can you be married to a dead person? I guess so, but for this sake, she's not. Our Reaper used to have a family, but unfortunately, I'm pretty sure they divorced, so he doesn't get affected by it. But someone who does get affected by it might be Anna. I'm not sure. We don't know if they divorced or not. They think that Anna's dead, but I guess if we're using the Widow logic... <laughs> Anna shouldn't count. However, someone who does for sure count is Torbjorn. Torbjorn is probably married to his wife, so it works on Torbjorn. And as of right now, it works on Anna. So as you can see, that's a lot more than a body shot should do. However, I guess it's ambiguous whether or not um, Anna's married. Either way, Widowmaker does more damage to people who are married, or I guess in this case was once married or faked her death. Actually, now I'm thinking about it, Anna's lore doesn't make much sense. Next up is Winston. Now we all know that he has a nickname, Winton. And you know what Winton sounds like? It sounds like win a ton, right? So if I was to press F, I freeze. Now this has a very simple mechanic. If I am not killed within 30 seconds, I still can't move, so if I move my mouse or try any abilities, it doesn't work. But if I can survive for 30 seconds, I win. And this will get lots of people wins, so it's called Winton. He wins a ton because he just does. Okay, that's not supposed to happen. Of course freaking push breaks it when I'm trying to show it off. How does that even happen? I said declare victory, not declare draw. Bro, the workshop editor just is not okay. Alright, now that we're on a better map, I decided to bring my Discord kittens back over here. Normally Hammond's pile drive looks like this. Well now if you do it, it's more like an actual pile drive where you pick someone up and you slam them down. Or at least I think that's what a pile driver is. This is what it looks like from the side, so feel free to pile drive your Discord kittens. Speaking of Discord kittens, you should join my Discord and become one of my kittens. That sounds weird out of context by the way, I have no Discord kittens. Okay, but actually I do have a Discord, we do some dumb stuff. We're actually going to be starting a Minecraft server hopefully. And I can verify that I have no Discord kittens. Moving on to Zarya, she has a pretty fun one. So Zarya was one of the ones that actually helped me inspire this video because I was purposely misinterpreting stuff. And you know how we call it Zarya Bubble. Well, she moves randomly like a bubble. Not only is this quite fun and potentially useful, obviously I did not get lucky that time because I got pushed down, but this does indeed work on teammates. Anyways, the final hero, Zenyatta, when you Discord orb someone, you turn them into a Discord mod. I don't want to be your kitten. Anyways, like the video if you liked it, subscribe to this video if you subscribed it, and if you don't join my Discord, I'm going to kidnap you.